OSI model is basically a reference model, you know, which is being developed for uh, IT companies so that they can build their product on the basis of OSI model so that they, their devices can communicate over, uh, you know, over a specific network or you can say over internet, right? So the real time implementation of OSI model is TCP IP stack. Okay, so let's begin the discussion. So in OSI model, there are seven layers. So all seven layers are listed here. So you can see the very first layer is your physical layer. The another one is data link layer. The next layer is network layer. Then we have transport layer. Then we have session layer. Then we have presentation layer and then we have application layer. So each and every layer has its own specific role. Okay. And uh, you can also uh, refer to them as L1, L2, L3 and L4 in networking terms. Okay, so basically, if you are if you are planning to step inside the network security, so this is this would be your initial you know uh, initial slide you would be going through, and you need to get basic understanding of OSI model, and then you need to understand how TCP IP is working, how UDP IP is working. Okay, so you need to get the basic idea of it. So you know in it industry if you talk about you know if you have a discussion with the network engineers you would you would see these terminologies you know being used very frequently like l4 information l3 information l2 information okay so these three terms are very frequent and you would also uh, listen to you know this term l7 information like so whenever is some you know whenever someone is saying that uh, it is l7 device it means that it can process all the layers all together if someone is saying that this is l3 device it means it can process up to this layer right so the functionality of that device is limited till l3 if someone is saying that this is l2 then the functionality of that device is limited to these two device, these two layers okay so l2 would be your switches right l3 would be your routers and l7 would be your firewalls and it can be your van optimization devices okay Okay, so now we will discuss each and every uh, layer in detail. Let me rub this one. Okay, so let's start with your physical layer. Okay, so okay, let's take an example. It will be really beneficial for you. So let's say host A or you can say user A. is trying to access any you know web service or you can say web application on host b okay and the ip address of this host b is a.b.c.d right so this is the browser you can say it is chrome or firefox so the protocol here is http and it will try to access a.b.c.d so we will see how the you know how this data will be processed in each and every layer right so application layer so the protocol which is handling this particular data from the user is http right and it is sitting at application layer okay so next to application layer this is presentation layer so now this presentation layer is responsible to represent your data you know whether the user is trying to access any image file or it is trying to access any video okay so it will format your data accordingly whether this is a jpg file or it is mp4 file right so it is responsible for the presentation then this session layer you know it is it will keep track of your session ongoing session with the remote server right so let me give you the real time uh, example for this so whenever you try to access a uh, bank website and if you leave it for like uh, for like more than 60 minutes so you can see that the server will automatically kick you out of the network right so it will show you that you logged out of the 
uh, of the current session so that is for the security reasons you know so that n- nobody can take advantage of your existing session with the bank server right so next to session layer there is there is a transport layer which is responsible for the host to host connectivity so this host right here is communicating with this host right here right so the end to end connectivity is ensured by transport layer okay and the protocols working on transport layer is tcp and udp okay then comes into play uh, your network layer so network layer is responsible to route your packet over internet or over network right so ip protocol internet protocol is playing role in network layer right now comes the data link layer so data link layer is responsible for l2 information that is your physical addresses known as mac addresses to uniquely identify your devices and to uniquely forward your packets in over the network right so and in physical layer it will start transmitting your data from the you know above layers to the network right so your sender is encapsulating the entire user data okay let me select the marker yeah so the process is encapsulation okay and your receiver is decapsulating it to get the original data so now let me explain you this in more detail so you can see here you know the application layer here and here they are sending data presentation layer they are sending data session layer is sending data but if you check here you know transport it is sending segments network is it sending packets then frames and then bits so you know these terms are confusing right now let me explain you each and everything so when your user at host machine a is trying to access a web application on host machine b so it is you know sending some sort of data to this application to this google chrome right so what chrome is doing is it is taking that particular data entry from the user and it is formatting it properly you know so these three layers application presentation and session uh, let me make some space here just a minute okay so these three layers are behaving simultaneously i mean the in the real time implementation these three layers can be referred as application layer only right so if you take the packet capture on l7 device like your firewalls you would be able to see that you know uh, you would be able to extract l4 information out of it l3 l2 and l1 and in layer 7 you know these three layers are combined together so that is your application layer okay so what chrome is doing here it is taking the data from the user then it is you know uh, formatting it as per the requirement okay and then the transport layer it is after processing the data you know from these three layers you know they are sending the traffic towards the transport layer and transport layer is dividing that particular data into segments right so why transport layer is dividing the data into segments so this is your actual data right and it is being divided into segments at transport layer why it is doing that because as per the standards you cannot send more than 1500 bytes over network okay let's say the this data is of uh, 1 gb let's say so i cannot send 1 gb right away over the network right so what i would be doing is i need to divide this this data into different segments then i need to you know uh, add certain headers so that i can you know route each packet over network and they can you know they can reach to their destination and then destination can assemble them back and then you know decapsulate them and you know extract the actual information which is being sent from the sender right this is what is happening at transport layer so what transport layer is doing is dividing your actual data into segments 
right this is your segments then an adding you know transport headers okay so we will discuss everything in detail in coming videos now let's say this is one segment it will be sent to the network layer okay which is your l3 now network layer will process it and will add its own headers and tailing information whatever is required right after doing it it will become packet and network layer will send that packet to the data link layer data link layer will add its own information okay and it will become frame now the size the maximum size allowed of this frame to be you know so that you can send this frame over network is 1500 bytes as per the standards right so then it is being transferred to the uh, actual uh, hardware layer that is your physical layer so your interface will start sending this information in the form of bits that is 0 and 1 because your machine will understand uh, either you know there is a current or there is no current right so there is no current there is current so in this language your mach machine will understand whether there is data or there is no data and we do our encoding and decoding accordingly okay so once these receiver will start receiving these packets it will start you know processing it from from layer 1 to layer 7 here the flow of packets are from l7 to l1 so if you talk about send uh, you know sender per se so the processing would be from l7 to l1 and if you talk about from uh, receiver per se so the processing would be from l1 to l7 so your l1 will receive the information okay then your data link layer will extract the l2 information out of it okay and remove the headers whichever header it has added here okay then it will send the next uh, pdu to the network layer now network layer will extract the l3 information out of it and will you know extract the pdu and send it to transport layer then transport layer will extract the l4 information out of it and send the uh, segment towards the application then application layer will take the take out the actual data out of it and will send it to the web application okay so this is how osi model is working so let me show you some varsha captures for the real time you know implementation so that you can get familiar with it okay so now you can see that this is the frame okay so 66 bytes on wire right so if you let me show you so if you come here so you can see that physical layer is calculating i mean it's treating packet or frame or segment or data in the form of bits right so if you go back you can see the actual bytes that you know that has been transmitted over network is 528 528 bits that is 66 bytes right so it will con you know it will uh, contain your interface id encapsulation type okay arrival time it will you know keep each and every uh, information which is required at layer one right so your next layer is layer two so it will contain your destination MAC address and source MAC address details. That is your L2 information. Okay. So L2 information is your MAC addresses, right? Now the third layer, L3 layer, which is internet protocol. So it will contain your source IP address, destination IP address, you know, which internet protocol version you are using, what is the header length, and there are certain fields which we will, you know, which we will discuss in coming videos. So we will, I'm not going to discuss it right here. Okay, so this is the L3 information which is sitting right here and which is known as network layer. Okay, after network layer, the data will be sent to transmission control protocol that is TCP and it is L4 layer so it will extract the L4 information that is your source port and destination port okay and there are certain certain other fields as well which we will cover in next video